So these days, people have been discussing the best messaging application that they can use for both privacy and security. Between the blurred lines between WhatsApp and Facebook data and Elon Musk shilling Signal, there's been a lot more discussion about what the best app is, both for your privacy and for the control you have over your data. Now, I do use Signal myself. I think it's a great application, um, but there is it does have its limits. So most notably is that you cannot set up a Signal instance. It's not federated, so you're reliant on whatever server code that they have on their servers. And there's been a few things that people have been rubbed the wrong way about. Uh, although I do trust Moxie, I think he's a great guy. Uh, the fact that they didn't push their commits for about a year so they could hide the fact that they're adding cryptocurrencies as a feature. And his complete objection to using Matrix is kind of rubbed people the wrong way. And it's, it's made people think that they're kind of trying to build some sort of an ecosystem where you're more reliant on services that Signal directly interacts with instead of just a free and open service. Now, although Matrix is another good example of a messaging application that allows people to federate, and I'll probably end up doing a video on that in the future, one thing I want to discuss today is XMPP. So XMPP has been around for a while. It essentially allows you to host your own server. Uh, it doesn't just allow you to communicate with people that are on your server that you've added yourself, but it also allows these servers to communicate with each other. So if you've seen my previous Pleroma and Macedon videos where I've talked about federated sites, it's quite similar in that these XMPP servers can actually communicate with each other. Now, I've looked through some of the servers and stuff that XMPP have recommended on their website, and a lot of these seem to be kind of more, not necessarily proprietary, but like they're aimed more at like large businesses and stuff that need to have some sort of internal chat application. So there's this might be good if you're in a giant organization and you want to make sure that your data is secure and private but it's not really good for the casual user that just wants to have a basic chat application with some of their friends. Now, luckily on the website, there's this project called Prosody. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's a Croatian name or something. But Prosody is basically everything that you would look for in one of these uh, self-hosted services. So it's very minimal. Um, it's just one package, essentially. There's only a few commands that you need to to set it up. Um, and in under 10 minutes, you could easily have a Prosody server set up, an XMPP server, should I say. So for some reason, the developers decided to use Lua to develop this. Um, I don't exactly know why. Uh, I'm guessing they might have been game developers at some stage, and Lua is just something that they were comfortable with. But yeah, it's essentially just a very minimal XMPP server that you can set up on a server that you're running. So before you start this, you're going to need to have your own domain. In a previous video, I set up a Pleroma instance. Uh, you can check that out if you want. Um, but I use this domain, shyposting.com. And I'm going to use the exact same domain for this. So one good thing about the uh, Posity, Prosity, whatever, whatever it's called. And um, one good thing about it is that it's so minimal that you can have an Nginx server running as well pointing to some website or whatever that you have, and you can still use that domain as a XMPP endpoint. So yeah, you can still have your website or whatever running on your domain, and you can just have your XMPP server in the background. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to get straight into it. So you're going to need a server as well, and what you're going to need to do is point your domain to this server's public IP address. So if you're on GoDaddy or, Vo or Epic or whatever, just point your IP address or point your domain, should I say, to this IP address. The next thing you're going to need to do, if you haven't done it already, is you're going to need an SSL certificate. Uh, this is just for security. Technically, it's not necessary, but you really don't want to be using services without encryption. So the good thing about this is that uh, the EEF have developed a tool called CertBot, or Let's Encrypt, should I say. And basically, it allows you to get an SSL certificate for free. So if you just download the Let's Encrypt tool, uh, I'll just type in my password. 
and basically you can just set up a SSL certificate for whatever domain you have. So this is the domain I would use. Um, I'm not going to do it again because I already have a SSL certificate for it. But yeah, you're just going to need to do that before you go into anything else. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need to do is just to download the Prosody package itself. So it's just a single package. Um, there are some dependencies that they mention, uh, especially for some optional features, but none of them I really needed. And even the mandatory ones, um, I didn't need to download them. So I presume that they're actually included in this package itself. So no matter what operating system you're on, you'll probably be able to run this. Uh, so, I mean, do people even have Mac servers? I, I didn't know that was a thing, but yeah, I guess if you have an old Mac or a Windows computer at home, you can run a Prosody server on it. So yeah, I'm just going to do that. sudo apt get, because I'm on Ubuntu, install Prosody. Okay, so once that's done, you're going to have a folder in the etc. Prosody. Yeah, and so this Lua config file itself is basically all you'll need to really do in order to edit the the server itself and get it up and running. So the main thing you're going to want to look for inside this config file is this virtual host. Now you're going to want to change this to whatever your domain is. Again, in my point, it's shyposting.com. And so there's another few things you'll need to do. If you want to add an admin, uh, after we set a user, we can add this to, it's up here, where is it? Yeah, so we can add the user to this admin section if we want to. So yeah, the when you install Prosody, um, it also installs a CTL. Um, and basically, you'll be able to add a user to this. Uh, the format it is, is that you have the username and then at your domain. So in my case, I'll just do owen at shiteposting.com. Uh, it's going to ask you to enter a password. I'll just say, uh, I'll put a password in, I guess. Okay, so once you have your user, again, if you want, you can put your username into this. So just, you know, owen at shite posting.com and yeah you should be good to go now you can just check to see if the system d service is running in the background so it basically creates a, ugh, I can't spell today so you can just check to see that the prosody server itself is running in the background so the next thing you're going to need to do is add your SSL certificates to the Prosody certificate file. So you can do this through their CTL, but I had some difficulty with it. Normally you run root cert import, I think it is. And then you just give it the name of a file. Um, now, not in the documentation, it says that you can just direct it to your um, Let's Encrypt folder and it'll be able to import it all, but it, I wasn't able to. So what the Prosody cert actually needs is it needs your uh, private key, but it also needs the full chain PM, PEM file. So what I decided to do was if you just add them both to a single file and import that over, it'll seem to work. So I have this command that I ran yesterday and I think I already did it, so it doesn't matter. Basically, if you just add your private key and the full chain PEM file to a single file and you import that, it'll work. So again, sudo, if you just do root, and you see all these commands will be in the article that I have down below. So I have an article where I just wrote out all the commands that I ran and you should be good to go. So I'm just gonna copy this in and import it and yep. So yeah, it'll just tell you that it imported the keys for the domain you have and also localhost, although that's not there. Okay, so after you've done that, you should probably restart your systemd file just to be sure. So this Prosody XMPP server is running on whatever virtual server that you have. And now you'll need a client on your phone or your computer or whatever to connect to it. So I'm just going to show you on my phone here. So if you followed my Calyx OS tutorial or you have Lineage OS, then you might have this pre-installed already. It's basically an application called Conversations. You can get it through F-Droid. Um, it's available on Android. If you are on iPhone for whatever reason, uh, then you'll need to download something like mobile.
So I'm just going to click, I already have an account. I'm just going to type in my address, or sorry, my username, owen at shyposting.com. And I'm not going to show you the password, but I'll type it in. So once you have that set up, um, it'll just ask you to add in your avatar. So I'm just going to take this picture of a very famous French guy. Um, if you know who this is, then leave a comment down below saying, and then after that, yeah, you can just create more users uh, for your friends or whatever, and you can just add them to the server, and then they'll be able to connect through this app as well. And that's basically it. In only a few commands and, you know, 10 minutes worth of work, you should be able to set up your own FMPP server. This is a lot better than some of the other services around because it's completely ran by you. You know where your data is. You can control it. You can add as many features or as little features as you want. And yeah, you're just not reliant on large companies like the Signal Foundation or whatever. So yeah, that's basically it. If you have any issues with any of the things I've done in this video, then please let me know. And until then, I'll see you next time.